Hi, this is Shira Rubinoff. Welcome to Insights in Tech. I'm here with Stacy Mill. Stacy, welcome. Thanks. How are you today? Great. Thank you. Stacy, can you please share with our audience a little bit of what you've done in the past and what you're currently doing? I've been in IT for over 30 years and concentrating on security for over 20. I've worked in uh, healthcare, service, uh, food service, as well as aerospace and automotive. And I'm currently the chief technology officer at the state of Kansas. Well, we're going to jump right in there because I'm sure you've been super busy with uh, the COVID hitting and changing what's going on in our world right now. So Stacy, how would you say that government is really reacting to COVID in terms of the businesses, businesses have been shutting down, people have had layoffs, having to tighten up on security, cybersecurity really across the board as things have been moving forward, have been slowing down, have been pivoting. Really, we could use any of these words. It's been such a wild west out here. You know, it's an absolute mind shift uh, for a state agency. And in, in the state agencies, everything has been on premise, you know, whether it's the data centers, whether it's in the people. So work from home was an absolute, you know, uh, new concept. And we had to do it and we had to do it fast. I mean, in our state, we rolled out over 3,000 laptops in four weeks mm -hmm. and we've trained over 3,000 people on Teams which is what our state uses for uh, video conferencing. Um, that's just the tip of the iceberg. It's been a big mind shift. It's been an exciting time. Unfortunately, um, that's just the tip of the iceberg. So where have you seen maybe the biggest pitfalls or things that you didn't really expect to happen, maybe take hold within government as you're trying to shift into this new remote work? And also now maybe shifting more into a hybrid of remote work and in-person work? You know, the big mind shift there is not only around securing the data, but also the integrity of the conversation. Sure. Um, making sure that you have the ability to record things or not record things in some cases. So we've worked very closely with every one of our agencies to walk through, you know, where are, is Teams the right fit for them? Is it Zoom? Is it go to meeting? I mean, we've really been very uh, agile and trying to flow with what's the best fit for purpose. I think the biggest thing that has really held us back has been the age and uh, the age of the infrastructure. I mean, it's just not there. Um, the lack of government cloud capabilities as well. So that's been one of the things that we, we had started um, last year looking at going to the cloud. Um, now you see a rush for it, sure. uh, whether it be you know virtual data, uh, virtual data centers in the cloud, virtual desktop infrastructure uh, so that we don't have to roll out so many laptops and really about securing the data. And that's the mind shift because when you have it in your four walls, um, there's that, you know, and you build those walls high and your moat's deep, there's that feeling of security. And now we've really made that leap to data everywhere, you know, and how data needs to move and be shared. Um, the biggest thing also is with our web infrastructures with unemployment uh, claimants having to come and file online because there's no way to do it in person. You know, how do we keep those systems up and, and performing? It's been an exciting time and, and a very, uh, you know, it's a passion project for sure. Uh, long hours and just a lot of dedicated people uh, doing all they can to, to help everyone. Certainly. And would you, have you seen maybe a generational gap with moving to remote work with, in government, I'm sure across businesses are having some of those or have had some of those issues where, you know, maybe the millennials are very quick to like, OK, we can go online. Easy to do because we're online anyway. This is how we like to communicate while other generations might say, you know what, I need this in person. I'm not used to this. This is uncomfortable for me. I understand the security protocols, but there are too many steps. I want to bypass them. Have you had any of those issues or have seen or heard about those issues? Absolutely. And one of the issues in our state is just the availability of good, clean broadband. Um, so even when you roll out, you know, a, a virtual um, infrastructure, you know, so that people can connect from home, they're not familiar with. Um, the big thing for us has been multi-factor, you know, rolling that out, um, trying to convince people that, you know, we can use things like tokens, soft tokens on phones rather than rolling out hard tokens. So there's been that maturity level there too. It's not just generational, um, although that, that we have seen that, but it's mostly been about access to 
the type of infrastructures you need to be successful. Um, so we have a lot of team members that have started to um, come into the office just because of lack of broadband at home. And again, when you're educating virtually, you also have to consider those constraints. Of course, you know, those are very important points. And as we see, cyber attacks are happening and they're not going away and they're just going to continuously grow with time and certainly through this period. What is your advice to organizations or governments or even individuals out there? How they can lock down their cybersecurity within the organization, really going back to the nuts and bolts of cybersecurity, but also protecting for what's coming? You know, we I just pulled out, you know, the, the good trusty dusty NIST list. Yeah. Um, your SANS top 20s, you know, the things that a lot of us in corporate America have taken for granted because we've been talking about it for 10, 15 years. Right. Um, so bringing that to the forefront of the fit for purpose, and that's a, been a big model of how do we, you know, monitor, maintain, and manage this was our the start, uh, was where we started with the discussion. Now it's how do we do that and do it virtually. Right. Um, so that's an even bigger mind shift. And for me, it's been about looking at how you're servicing your constituency, uh, making sure that you have those web systems up, also redundant, also good throughput, but utilizing the cloud some. People have been afraid of it um, in government. Um, bringing, there's been a couple good partners um, that, are, that have popped up for our government space. Um, to build content delivery networks so that you can, you know, take that denial of service attack away from your perimeter. And that's something we've been doing in corporate America for 10 years. It's brand new to government. You're seeing a lot of new um, growth in not only, you know, Google, Amazon um, have been, you know, especially Google with Google Connect, getting our service desk virtual. These are the first first days of virtual service desk in our government. It's just been such an exciting time to see us adopt it, adopt it quickly, but also have that, because um, that's all, also dangerous. You gotta make sure you're doing it the right way and securing it along the way. So we've, we've been able to have that conversation from the get-go. So, you know, I, I always say, you know, the first of March, our lives really changed um, all of us. And in technology with the state, uh, you know, we've, we've been 16, 18 hour days every day through the weekends, making sure that we have the right systems up, the right performance, uh, because there's nothing more frustrating than you can't get through on a phone, you can't get through on, on the web, how do we awesome. enable that? And it's just been amazing how corporate America, private, public have all come together. And that's the thing that, that I'm the most proud of is seeing all of these different uh, dichotomies, whether it was Microsoft who offered us free uh, Teams training, you know, unlimited free tra uh, training, whether it was, you know, working with Google to get up, you know, virtual call spaces within days, not months. And so it's been an exciting time to, to serve. Sure. And as you were saying, exactly, organizations are moving and migrating to the cloud. And as you also mentioned, securing along the way. Um, obviously, the large organizations are more prepared to migrate towards the cloud at a quicker um, speed, but even some of the smaller companies have been migrating to the cloud. What type of security tips can you give any of these companies, organizations that are migrating to the cloud that need to think about their security posture as they're doing this? You know, always bring a good partner, a good, um, you know, a good architect with you, someone who knows business and enablement not just a technical person. Um, those two ends, because you've got to think about not only process, um, but your procedures and your technology together. It's that human element that a lot of people miss in that move to the cloud. So how am I going to educate? What type of enablements are, am I looking for? With those two things being first of mind, then enforcement. So enablement, then enforcement, and that's really how you're going to evolve. I call it my E4 strategy. So whenever we, when I talk to whatever the small the size of the organization, small to large, it's about what's your mission, what's your purpose, and then what risk are you willing to um, assume along that way? 
because that's really what you've got to make those decisions about. Or, or, uh, am I willing to go to the cloud? Am I willing to use a third party? Uh, what's, what's my team size? And look at that from a risk reward perspective. Um, with us, the, another big thing is your speed, how fast you want to go. And if you want to go fast, usually, you know, the three-legged stool, cost, speed, and resources, um, it's going to cost you a little more. But don't be afraid of it. That's the most important thing that I, I would really like to, to tell everyone is don't be afraid of the cloud. Um, it is secure. Uh, what I always look at it, uh, which is much different than how we looked at it, you know, 10, 15 years ago, they're in the business of security. They have to keep these large, large infrastructures up around the globe. And they are a constant target. They are a singular target in some cases. Um, so they know what they're doing. Uh, it's just how, how much of that you want to lean into depends upon your business case. Very good points and very, very interesting. Um, what would you say also, as you see, let's call it the future of work of governments, because this is a massive shift for governments itself. That's probably something they never expected. I'm sure as, you know, in the last number of years, businesses were making a bit of a move to some um, some of their employees going to remote work, but governments never had that in their minds at all to do that. How do you see the governments are going to embrace this type of, let's call it remote work or what's coming next or digital transformation across industry? Where do you think it'll fall or land? Excuse me. You know, the thing for me has just been, uh, I just took it for granted. I'm new to government. You know, I, I've been in this role for a year and um, what, what I came into as a passion project has really turned into, you know, that digital uh, innovation. Um, it's exciting there. And I, I think had the pandemic not happened, we wouldn't be having this conversation. We'd still be, I think, 10 years out right. from having any type of work at home or business to business type connectivities the way we're used to in corporate America for the government space. So I really think it's it's been forced upon us, and uh, uh, as as good servants of our of our state, you know we've made the most of it, and we've we've broke some eggs along the way. Uh, it hasn't been pretty, but it's it's getting there. It's getting better, and I think the biggest uh, the biggest learning that I hope comes out of this is that we have to build these digital modern digital infrastructures to best serve our constituents. There is no choice anymore. Um, most people are remote. They want that ability, just like they interact with other businesses, to inter interact with government. And we're seeing it because, uh, and, it, and it's not that we're not, uh, I stumble on this one because it is so foreign to me that we haven't thought about this this last 10 years. So that's the biggest learning for me is that now we're talking about the next five the next 10 years out. And we're not concentrated on just this fiscal year. Uh, unfortunately, this, this awful pandemic that's affected so many lives has forced it upon us, but right. we've learned from it. And I don't think we're gonna get, be in this same spot five years from now, because we know the, the, what can happen and what we have to react to. Sure. Um, and as, as you say, say, you know, you never let a good crisis go to waste. And this is one of the, the an unimaginable crisis that you know I, I just hope that we never ever have to react to again but we need to be able to know that we have to have those plans in place that's a hard lesson learned definitely well we see as I mentioned before the cyber attacks are continuing and just getting stronger and would you say that governments are now going to be a massive target because infiltrating a government really can affect a multitude more of people than even organizations so what would you say is the key most important thing for a government to do in order to be cyber safe and cyber secure just across government itself in order to not have these targets on their back, which is almost impossible? Exactly. And, you know, cyber espionage and, and cyber hacking, it's about follow the money. And so, you know, especially with our unemployment crisis, um, there's billions of dollars going out and there's, you know, uh, millions of dollars of fraud trying to be per perpetuated on all of our states. Um, and that's one of the big things is we have to think about security up front. And states have been very stringent on privacy. You know, that's one of the things I see pretty good is the privacy of, of the information. The security of the infrastructures, 
that's new. And so uh, what I've really loved working with our state CISO and, and his team, we work together um, uh, under one umbrella and it's been exciting to see people open their ears and listen. It's not just about uh, the lip service of security. You know, it's not just about passwords. It's about those infrastructures. It's about the age of them. It's about making sure that we're being proactive. That is, is one of the things that uh, I think is going to really propel. Uh, but they have to absolutely. So when we started talking about, you know, the systems when in March, our unemployment system, it, it just fell over. And uh, we, the systems wouldn't run. Um, we had usually around maybe 800 to max a thousand person. And we were seeing on our system at one time, we were seeing over 200,000 trying to hit our websites. Websites were just down, you know, they just couldn't even handle it. So we've learned because of the crisis. And so we've started to put in those type of cloud content delivery networks that help us with caching, help us with application firewalls out away from our edge, out in the cloud before it gets to us. We're also looking at um, and, and moving towards data centers as a service. We have mainframe as a service. Um, so we've started that cloud migration. And then the, the adoption of a lot of our um, stuff with Google this, this over the year has sure. just been amazing. And not the year, actually in the last two months has just been mind blowing. And they see that value. They see the speed, they see the performance. And uh, I think we've actually, you know, made 10, 10 years of progress in it on 60 yeah. days. Well, Stacy, thank you very much for sharing your very valuable insight to our audience and certainly around government. I think this is very interesting and very important points that you did share. And thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you. And everybody stay safe and stay well. Thank you.